Hello everyone, this is Maximus McCullough with A1 Website Pro, and today we're going to talk about a little plugin called Max Buttons. Uh, it's a WordPress button plugin maker, and uh, this is uh, it on the WordPress.org repository. And <clears throat> here's the button in action on my good friend's site, um, uh, Carl Phillips and Michael, called Carl Michael, and you can make these different buttons, uh, you know, use short codes. For your buttons and you can style them all you want you know so a lot of people want to be able to make their own buttons via CSS and stuff like that stuff like using an image and this is a perfect solution for you uh, basically what you'll do is you'll uh, go look for max buttons and you could download it to your uh, WordPress site just like I did here and then whenever you're ready to go start creating buttons you just click the little buttons thing or you could look for it over here. All right, so here's the button that we already made, and this is the short code that it gave us. We could either take this short code or this short code and use either one within our WordPress. Okay, now if you want to use it in your sidebar, okay, and all you're getting is a, a short code like this, you'll have to go to uh, A1 Website Pro. I have a short code in here for you, yeah, or a function that you can put in your functions file to activate short codes in a sidebar because uh, a lot of times it just doesn't come naturally in WordPress. So if you go to functions for WordPress, uh, and just scroll down here, um, what you can do is uh, make short codes in your sidebar widgets. So you'll need this code. If you're, if you're not getting your buttons to show up in your sidebar, you'll need to copy that and then you'll paste it into your functions file. Let me show you where that's at real quick just in case you needed help with that. So if you go to appearance and then editor, okay, and uh, if you have a child theme, you know, you should have a functions.php file. This particular one doesn't have it, so we'll go to the virtue, select, and then you'll see you have to select whatever theme that you're using if it's a child theme make sure you put it in the child theme but then you will want to go down to the theme functions and then you'll just paste it at the end of this file okay now if this has a PHP tag you want to make sure that you put it in the, the end but you put it in just something like that there okay so then that way uh, shortcodes will execute into your sidebars alright so <clears throat> this Let's uh, get right into uh, creating our first button. Of course, you see this one that I already did. And then we'll just click Add New. Something else I want to show you. Um, if you're in a page or a post, uh, let me go here. And we'll go like we're just going to add a new one. All right, you'll, you'll get this little button here. And then so you could... Uh, insert the button manually like this you know after you get the buttons all created but you have to create them here first okay so this is the way the way it is set up and this is the the default the green and the blue okay now you can change all this stuff you can move this around out of your way and uh, you can give this name maybe we're going to link this to the picture frame section of the website okay um, these are picture frames made by Carl there's a great picture frame maker by the way and uh, so here's uh, the section of the website for custom framing and this is the URL that we want to copy so we're going to right click and copy this okay and go back to our buttons and the URL you want to paste in here now, if you're going to, this is an option. If you want, when people click in on it, it opens up a new tab. You would want to tick that button. If you want to put a no follow link on, uh, then you would tick that button. Okay? So if you want to know uh, what the reasons would be for those, you could go to A1 Website Pro and look up no follow. You have a lot of good information about that. Okay, so time to start configuring our button. So let's go ahead and put, say, picture frames just like that kind of like our uh, like our last button here you can change the font you know they have different styles of fonts that you can use okay so you just pick whatever you want there and uh, we'll go ahead and use Verdara and then here you can make our font larger you know as large as we want okay we want it nice and big uh, we could align the text to the center to the left or to the right okay um, now <clears throat> here's the the weight we can make our text normal or bold okay 
Now here's the shadow offset. Let me just show you what the what the, the negative one. There's a little shadow here, and let me just put ten on there so you can see. Do you see the shadow coming up? Maybe we'll make it fifty so you can see it. So you can see how the the shadow comes comes up there. So we'll just put that back to one because negative one is kind of cool. Now that's on the left side. Now let me show you the top. Put ten here. In fact, let me put ten on all of these. Okay, and then we'll have 10 on our shadow width. You notice how it kind of blurs it out, okay? Put 5 or whatever. Okay, so that's that's how you can, uh, you know, do that. We'll put everything back to the default, which is negative 1. Okay, and leave that as 0. All right, now here's our padding. Uh, this padding is the top, bottom, left and right. So if we made this 25 pixels, you'll notice that we get more space on top of the button. And uh, if we go to the bottom, we made this 25 pixels, or maybe 35 pixels. You know, you can see how the button is occupying more real estate. And uh, if we do that, you know, left side, make 44 pixels, right, 44 pixels so we can make the picture nice and big. Now let's say that we wanted to change the background of this uh, on the on these buttons. Okay, and I'm not talking about the inside. I'm talking about the background. Well, that's where you would choose this. You know, maybe you want a pink background or or a different background here. So you could do that as well. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and leave ours set to white, which is FFF FFF. Okay. I'll keep it white for us. Now, as we scroll down, this uh, little window scroll down with us, and uh, here we could start, uh, you know, choosing our text color. Uh, sh uh, sh this would be the normal. This is the normal button, and then whenever they hover over it, that's what they'll see. Okay, so that's what the, why you have these two pictures here. This is the normal, uh, the normal one, and this is when it hovers. So uh, maybe we want a black text. Okay, maybe we want a uh, you know uh, a pink shadow on our black text. Maybe we want our gradients to be blue. Okay, maybe we want to start with uh, you know a light blue, and then maybe we want to end with a uh, you know maybe a darker blue, you know, or something like that. Okay. Uh, the border, maybe we want we want our border to be orange. Okay. See how the border around the button goes orange, maybe a darker orange, something like that. And then a border shadow will make it pink. All right. So that's that's how you can do that. And then whenever you hover over it, we'll leave the text white. But uh, maybe we'll take the, uh, here, here's what you can do. Like if you get all these set, you could copy the normal colors to hover. Okay, so then that away, you can start configuring it a little bit better, you know. Maybe you just want to lighten things up, you know. Make them just a slightly different, you know, so it's not real drastic. You just take this over, drag it. Down, and then whatever else you want to do, whatever fits fits your fancy, okay. And then if you're like, well, I would like that to be my main button, you could swap them. You see how it swaps them back and forth. So there, there you go. Now, as we go down here, uh, let's say that you wanted like you know rounder buttons or oval buttons. This is the top left. This is the top left corner. So if you see that I increase this like that, you'll see it puts a rounder one on there. Okay, and I could go 55, you know, uh, maybe uh, this one I could put it at 2, you know, maybe the bottom left I could put it 55, okay, bottom right at uh, 66, okay, so you can all do all kind of cool little things with that. Um, here's your style, you have uh, solid, you could have it dashed, see how it makes these, uh, uh, borders a little bit dashed, grooved, okay, inset, all right. Now you can uh, increase the width, maybe make it so you see it a little bit better. That's inset, dashed, dotted, double, double line, something like that, okay. All right, so you can play around with that. And here's our, our shadow offset. We can put that in negative one if we like, and maybe two. Okay, so we can see that, 
you know, it's kind of taken a little bit of shape. You know, it's just whatever you want to play around with. Now, here's we could we could take the uh, where the gradient stops. You'll see that if we use a higher higher number like that, it gets lighter. If we use a lower number, it gets darker. Okay. Uh, here's the gradient opacity, 100. So if you put it on 10, you see that it lightens up. 100 is darker. The gradient end capacity, if we put that on 10, you can see that's where the gradient ends. Okay. So, and then of course this one would be the hover. So if we had one there on the hover, it would change just a little bit. And then maybe we could put this at 50. Okay. So that would be the normal button. That would be the hover. Okay. Now as we scroll down, here you could uh, use a container to, to wrap within a div, like a div line center or something like that. Um, what you could do, see, let's say that you wanted this to be 300 pixels wide. All right. Uh, you could make your button according accordingly and it'll um, let's see you could float it left that means this button would float left next to where where or you could float it right okay with inside this div all right we're not going to we're, we're not going to do that we're just going to make the button because most of you are just going to have a button and you're going to place it in the uh, thing but if you wanted to use this as a container you know where you're putting it in a div and you want to float this to the left or to, to the right of that container you could do that Okay, and you could go back and edit these buttons as well. Um, <clears throat> here you can use these important tags. Sometimes whenever you're trying to edit CSS, you have to use the exclamation port important for it to get it to work. All right, and down here this is an experimental auto response uh, for like mobile devices. But uh, you know uh, th what this uh, what the author says is that it's going to try to make its best guess anyway. Okay. All right. So after you're all done with that, you just click save. All right. Now you're ready to use the buttons. Um, uh, he has a pro version of this as well. Okay. But if we go back to our buttons here, we can get our all our short codes. See, here's the one that we made last time. Here's the one that we moved this made this time. Now you can grab this short code for the side button, or like whenever you're getting ready to uh, add a button. Let me just click Add New, leave this page, because we have to recycle, because I've had this page open. If we click Add Button now, now we can see, you know, we can easily add these buttons in here, just like that. Okay? So that's how you use this Max Buttons. All right? There's, it's, it's a pretty simple program, uh, plug-in, easy to use. Uh, I like it, and, uh, you know, I hope if you do too, if uh, you guys want to be able to... Um, you know, create your own buttons and lead your visitors to wherever you want. This is Max with Able Website Pro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Max Buttons WordPress plugin.